Hello everyone, today we're going to cover nested attributes in Rails and we're going to cover validating them. It's going to be very simple. This is it, it is a complicated thing to approach the first time until you see the solution and it's very simple to handle. So we're going to have a list of clients. The clients will have names and then they'll also have an address. We'll make the address its own model so that we don't just cram everything into the client model and then we'll just grab that address when we fill out the fields. And then if you like leave something blank, it'll tell you that you left it blank. But you can set that validation to be whatever you'd like because of how we're going to make this. So to do this, the only thing we really need to do is a Rails new and then name your project. We're not using ES build, uh, ES build or Bootstrap for this. It's just going to be like a bare bones project. We'll then create the scaffold and the model for the address, and then we can uh, pretty much get started. So what we want to do is a Rails, well, I guess first we want to CD into our video app. Then we want to do a Rails G scaffold, call it uh, our client. Uh, we'll give each client a first name and a last name, and they don't have any like colon whatever after it because they're strings by default. After we have that, we can do a Rails G model, call this address. Uh, we'll say that a client's address can include their street, which will be a string their city, which will be a string, and their zip code of type integer. The last thing we want to do is hit space, and then we want to do a client colon references so that we can store the ID of the client inside of the address. That way we can tell which client an address belongs to. Once we have that, we can do a Rails DB colon migrate command to migrate our database, do a code dot to open this up in VS code before I forget like I usually do. And then we'll come over here. I'll close out of all this. And then we can do a Rails S to start the server. We can then go to the root of the application, see that we're running Rails 7. And then we can come over to config and routes.rb. And inside of here, we just want to say that the root of the application should be the client's controller index action. From here, we can just sort of step through the process. We'll start with the model, then we'll go to the view, and then we'll deal with the controller. So we'll come into the app, the models, and we'll come into, I guess, the client model first. So in here, all we have to do is say that this has one address. We'll talk about this a little bit, but essentially if it has one, you're going to want to make sure that you're using the singular address everywhere uh, when we do some stuff. If it has many, you might need to change it to addresses when you're talking about your parameters, but I'll show that when we get there. Then we want to say this is dependent colon colon destroy. And then we want to say this is the inverse of the client. So what does that mean? Well, we're going to be grabbing the address. When we grab the address, we don't want to have to grab the client again. So we're just kind of saying like, whatever, this just belongs to the client, right? The inverse of will allow us to do the validations though. So what we can do is we can say this accepts nested attributes for the address. You could add something after this that's like reject if um, it's completely blank, but we don't want to just reject if it's blank. Maybe we want to validate that like the zip code's five digits or something, right? So we just say this accepts nested attributes. Next, we have to come into the address.rb. And in here, we have the belongs to client, but the other thing we want to do is just say this is the inverse of the address. Once we have that, we can then say this validates the street, validates the city, and it doesn't validate the state, it's gonna validate the zip code. I'll just call it uh, Z-I-P-C-O-D-E because I know how to spell. And then we're, we're good to go, right? This works just like a regular model would. That's fine, let's come into our views, our clients, and our form for the clients because in here we wanna add in the uh, fields to like input the address, right? We want it to work largely like a regular form would. To do that, we can come down here, create an empty div, Inside of this div, we want to do a uh, percent equals form dot fields for an address. Then we'll do an address underscore form. You can go ahead and come down here, hit end, and then you're largely good to go. Now in here, we can just say this is an address form uh, field. We grab the, uh, the street, the city, and then it'll probably try to do the state again. So I'll have to change this to the zip code. We'll do that and then we can come down here and change this one as well. So what we have here is we have this form inside of our main form. We grab that and then we, we call a method on it that says fields for the nested attributes that we're allowing in our client. We accept nested attributes for an address. That's why we do it here. 
and we say do address form and then that becomes our prefix for our methods here the object that we're working with for all of these now this will get sent to the back end which is going to be the controller which is going to be our client's controller so how do we tell it that when we get these uh, this information that we should allow it uh, into uh, this model, right? Because we're creating two models, so we have to accept these parameters somehow. We just do a comma, and then this is where you're gonna wanna make sure that this is either singular or plural. If you're uh, doing a has many, I think this needs to be addresses, attributes, potentially. I'm not entirely sure, don't quote me on that, but if it doesn't work, this is a good place to check. Uh, and then you have your street, your city, and your zip code inside of this array here. You can then go ahead and save this. My formatter will probably change this to a percent %i, and then we're good to go. Now, if we try to do this, we can come over here, we can refresh, it'll take us to the, the client's page. Uh, but if we try and create a new client, you'll see that we don't have those fields. Now, we definitely added them to the form. Where did they go? Well, unfortunately, or fortunately, the way this works is it grabs all of the addresses that already exist in this, uh, in this client. So what you have to do is you have to make an address when you get here. You could do like your, your regular old build method in here, or you can come into your, uh, your controllers, your client's controller, scroll up to the new method, and then you can just say at client dot, and then you can call build underscore address or build underscore whatever your uh, nested attribute is called, save that, come over here, refresh the page, and now you have these fields appearing. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's test this. Let's just try to do something very basic. I'll say uh, I live on 123 Coolsville, and then this will be inside of, I don't know, um, the Scooby Dooville. I don't, I don't know, 12345 for the zip code, right? Create the client, it creates that client. Now we need to show these here. Uh, well, I guess we don't need to, but I'd like to show them. So we come into our client.html partial. And then in here, we just do the list of addresses, right? And then after each one, maybe we do like a BR tag just so that it's a bit cleaner uh, because whatever GitHub Copilot suggested here is not really the most readable. So we'll do that. And then we can do one more at the top here, I guess. We'll save that. So we get one, two, three, Coolsville, scooby dooville which is misspelled, and then our 12345. So let's edit this. Maybe we change this and we fix the spelling and we get rid of this uh, the space, we hit update. Now, if we come up here, we can see that we are inserting into the addresses and we're deleting from the addresses. So we're not necessarily updating this, right? Like we're just deleting it and then inserting a brand new one. We scroll up a bit further, we can see that we have an unpermitted parameter, which is the ID. Now, if you want to make sure this is actually updating it and not just deleting it and creating a new one, you need to include the ID. So the way to do that is to come into our client's controller We'll scroll down to the bottom. We'll add in an ID here, and then we can go ahead and save that. Now we can hit enter to move down to the bottom. We'll do an edit. We'll come in here and we'll just change this to one, two, three, four, Coolsville. We'll hit enter here just so we get moved down a bit. We'll hit update. And now if we scroll up, you can see we're now updating the address. We're not just deleting it and creating a new one. And we no longer have that unpermitted parameter error. And if you're wondering, uh, this was a suggestion from Matt Buds in the previous video. Uh, if you do have any other requests you'd like me to take a look at, I will try and get to them as soon as possible. Uh, just leave them in the comments down below and hopefully I'll see them, I'll add them to my list uh, and then I'll address them in whatever way the wind blows, honestly. I don't have like a way to order these. It's mostly just whatever I feel like doing at any day. Uh, but yeah, feel free to leave a suggestion down below for more topics similar to this one, uh, and I'll try and get to them. So thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.